Hello and welcome to the channel. For today's video, we're gonna build something that really sucks or blows. I guess it kind of depends how you install it. So for today's video, I finally got my parts in for the ventilation system. Time to finally put it together. But why a ventilation system? Why do I need this monstrosity of a blower mode? Uh, well, we'll get to that. First, let's look at what we're gonna actually be using today. This is the uh, AC Infinity Cloudline T6. He says with a question mark, yeah, the T6. So it is a six inch, you can actually see down in there, a PWM controlled blower fan. It has a hoity-toity thermostat controller and whatnot. And if for the life of me, if I could find the cord, there it is. And then it's even got a little, uh, focus yet, bastard. Thermostat and uh, I think this thing's also supposed to detect humidity. The idea here is in, gonna be hopefully kind of simple. So over here, this is the recording and gaming rig. It is two rigs. So there's a system on this side, system on this side. What you're watching right now is actually being recorded on the right side and uh, the gaming and all that nonsense happens on the left side. Nice little hood attached here. So the way this works, is the left side is an Intel i9-9900K on an Asus Prime Z390A board, something like that. 32 gigs Corsair Vengeance memory, RTX 2080 Ti, the EVGA for the Win 3 Ultra Hybrid variant. Then the recording rig is a Ryzen 5 3600 with an Asus Prime X470 Pro board, 16 gigs Corsair Vengeance memory, and a gigabyte Aorus 1080 Ti Extreme Edition. And then of course the Elgato 4K 60 Pro Mark II. That thingamabobber there. Plenty of power. I could pretty much play whatever I want in 4K and get at least 60 FPS buttery smooth. Downside, this RTX card, I have clocked it up to 394 watts on its factory setup, just overclocking, just a smidge. This 1080 Ti over here, I've gotten up to 355 watts. Now, granted, in a traditional gaming and recording situation, that's not what happened. The Ryzen chip can only hit about 85 watts anyways. However, I did a little test and I'll throw the footage up on screen. I'm actually looking at the footage now because I spent all morning trying to figure out why this camera wouldn't work. It's still not working quite right. It looks like a freaking slideshow but uh it, so i haven't written down my numbers yet but i did a two hour test to kind of simulate what happened so recorded in 4k a i used the cryogen uh ray tracing nor something or other I should, all right it is the cry engine neon nor ray tracing benchmark and i ran that on loop 4k maxed out ultra ray tracing the whole shebang now what i found so when we started i actually started the benchmark at at the tail end of making a video that uh, if you're watching this on release came out two or three days ago something like that actually you know what no that video isn't coming out uh, that video got scrapped anyways point is is that was where the card hit 400 watts and some other issues occurred so the room was already hot this is a tiny little office uh, it's 10 foot by 12 foot in here so when you have let's see 400 watts the 99 under full load will hit about 200 but average is about 140 then you got this 1080 ti that'll hit about about 100, 110 during recording, and the CPU, the Ryzen CPU, which will hit 65 watts on average, sometimes 85 if I'm streaming and recording at the same time. It's a lot of wattage. That's a lot of wattage for a tiny room. So this is a two hour test here just to show. And at the beginning, we were already at 77 degrees Fahrenheit in the room. That was after a two hour recording and about another two hours of editing and export. The card was hitting somewhere in the realms of about 350, 370 watts to be expected. It started with a, uh, it was boosting up to 2130 megahertz. Uh, and it was at 45 degrees C, expected to balance out at about 50 C if ambient air is good. Problem is, not only does it get hot in here till I'm uncomfortable, it gets hot enough that even the radiator for the GPU and the CPU cannot keep up. So, uh, we'll look at five minutes in. The room has approximately climbed maybe 0.2 of a degree. It's at 77.9 Fahrenheit. Uh, this is just one of those little, uh, it's one of these things. It's uh, you sometimes you supposed to be able to, you know, they're actually this one doesn't have it, but some of them they'll have a little plug in. You can put a probe outside for uh, this one actually reads 73 degrees because I just pulled it from the living room where it's 73 degrees. 
I'll set that over there. I'm willing to bet it's already about 75 degrees in here, uh, just because I've had the door closed while I've been messing around with the camera. So a couple big things to notice is on the Commander Pro software, the IQ software, I actually have a temp probe that is connected to measure exhaust air. So that is the temperature of the air as it leaves the uh, GPU radiator. Right at the start of this test, it was 77 in the room. The GPU at five, or at five minutes, sorry. It was 77.9 in the room. The GPU had already climbed to 53 degrees Celsius. The GPU clock had already dropped 30 megahertz. And the exhaust air from that radiator was at 107 degrees Fahrenheit, or 41.6 degrees Celsius. These are Cooler Master Master Fan Pro Air Blend 120s. They're capable without resistance of about 65 CFM. At 65 CFM, it takes all of 15 minutes to cycle all the air in this office. So every 15 minutes, the cool air in the office is being exchanged out for 107 degree air, and then of course it's going to climb because as ambient air, air goes up, then it'll go up until it reaches equilibrium, which will fry some. So that was five minutes. We let the test run for two hours. So at the two hour mark, the room temperature had climbed to 85.7 degrees. The GPU temperature was at 58C. It had downclocked itself to 2085 megahertz. The exhaust air was sitting about one degree C higher, so it's still putting out 106, 107 degree uh, Fahrenheit air. The big thing is the CPU, which wasn't even really under that much of a workload. I'm showing here 19% uh, at this point. Coolant for the 240 Corsair AIO had climbed five degrees C. That's actually having that coolant sitting at 35 degrees Celsius is a lot, especially for uh, the CPU when it's barely under load. So long and short of it, I need a solution. And that solution is ventilation. Unfortunately, I seem to have a problem with heat. Matter of fact, there was a big cut in between there about 30 minutes while I had to figure out why the camera was acting up and I'll show you. A, it's not a camera, it's an iPhone, or not an iPhone. A, it's not a camera, it's a Samsung S9 something or other. And uh, let, let me show you something. So real quick, we're gonna switch to the webcam handheld for a second just so I could show you. There is my solution to the phone overheating. I just used a uh, power brick plugged in over there and then I have, uh, that's actually an old AMD CPU fan that came with like an Athlon or something that I've zip tied to the holder so that the phone can get. And while we have the free cam, remember how I said it was hotter in here than what the 73, it's already reading 76 degrees Fahrenheit. I uh, I actually think that's kind of insane. In the past when the office would get warm, as a matter of fact, in the last house that I lived in, it was a, this is the squeakiest, noisiest chair in the world. In the last house that I lived in, it was a double wide and it had these vents over the door and I was able to put fans over the door. Not just any fans, of course. These are, uh, it is an absolute monstrosity. It's a 120 millimeter Delta fan and it is capable of 250 CFM, this one alone. Uh, it draws four amps by itself. I had four of these. My old office, I could pump the air out of the room at a thousand cubic feet per minute. To give you an idea of a thousand cubic feet per minute, I believe that would be ample airflow for a Chevy 350 up to about 7,000 RPM. Not that you can spin one that high out of factory, that's aftermarket. It's a lot of air. It's a lot of noise. And the other problem I ran into is that, sure, it was pumping all the heat out of the room, but at a thousand CFM, if I turned it up all the way, it was actually enough airflow that it was going out over the door and being sucked back in underneath to the point that the room would still heat up eventually. The other issue I had was the fact that the thermostat was right outside in the hallway. So all that hot air is just being pumped. After two hours, this room got to 85 degrees, starting at 77. At a four or six hour stream or recording session, I've had to get as hot as 98 degrees in here. Right on the other side of that door, thermostat. AC system ends up running for hours hours while it's trying to figure out how to cope with all this heat. So the new ventilation system, instead of using these redonkulous things and sending them out, will be to use this, the temperature controlled blower motor and actually suck the air through the radiators from over the machine and out through the window. So parts time. So the first thing we have in the way of parts is this glorious plastic piece of junk. Long and the short of it, this is meant for portable air conditioners. 
and you are, it's a window seal kit. So you stick it in your window, you shut your window down above it, you hook your hot air exchange out there. Well, I figured I could use the same concept. I'm just using a blower motor instead. Now, of course we still have to get the air around. So 35 foot of hose. Why 35 feet? Because it was cheap. I honestly, I only need about eight foot, but it was like $21 for a 16 foot length or $21 for 35 feet. Why not just get the 35 feet? And it's the, uh, the nice insulated kind with the PVC coating and whatnot. And it's black. One of the more expensive pieces, believe it or not, was actually this thing. And what this is, as you can see in there, there's a little, a little door. And basically as airflow comes by, it opens. When airflow stops coming by, it shuts. So the side that opens will go towards the exterior of the house, and this will go to the blower motor. If the blower motor isn't spinning and pushing air out, the door shut. Dirt, debris, and crap can't get back in. Also, if uh, a good strong breeze or something comes by the house and blows against it, I'm not gonna get all that nice South Texas summer air blowing back through and kind of defeating the purpose of this whole shindig. Of course, we have some odd end things. Uh, this is window weather strip seal. I think they mean it for doors and windows. I've always used this when installing window units because, well, I, this is actually only the second house I've been in that has central AC. Flashing tape, well, duct tape. This isn't flashing tape, my bad. Duct tape, no duct tape there's a difference this is not well actually this really gets confusing when you think about it because this is duck brand duct tape tape hose clamps black flex seal a used mixed drink canister this one might take some explanation but it is important and then of course the blower motor now this thing uh, you know, when I got it, they said 402 CFM. They said 32 decibels. That's a lie. This, this is much louder than 32 decibels. It actually has enough airflow that if you set it on a flat, smooth surface, it will propel itself. Matter of fact, I kind of want to demonstrate that. All right, so right now we're not getting a temperature reading or anything because it's, it's turned off, but well, it's not turned off, but I don't have the probe plugged in, so I can't read the temperature. Um, we'll point it away from the mic, so it's gonna point that way. So this fan here is about to get a blurst, blurst, a blurst, a blurst of air. <laughs> so here goes setting one. It is honestly on setting one, this is quieter than that computer is right now. And it's actually moving a fair amount of air. This is my streaming cheat sheet. So you can actually see it's, it's a fair amount of air. All right, let's do, uh, let's do step two. Step two, I would say this is still a little quieter than when the GPU fans are at full blast. I would say step two right there, this is about average volume level for this machine under full load. All right, here, here's where we gotta start being careful. All right, so step three, I would say this is getting there. This is pretty noisy. Now, I am using a dynamic cardioid mic, meaning that it has directionality and it is pointed right here. Matter of fact, if I I'm touching the mic now, like it's right at the edge of the screen. So being over here, the fact it's still picking up suspected, but again, I probably don't want to jam that in there. We have some airflow. Let's go ahead and jump it up to five. So at setting five, it should be doing something in the realms of about 200 CFM, assuming that it's rate of control or speed is about the same as its actual overall airflow. Actually, there's amazingly a lot of heat right there in that corner, and it's actually sucking all that towards my face. It's actually already getting light enough, it's starting to scoot just a little. <laughs> Good amount of air. Of course, these are meant for like grow room applications and everything, so this is, this is, this is overkill. Let's go straight to 10. I'm gonna hold on to it. There is level 10, if you can still hear me over it. <laughs> this, it's, it's, uh, it gets scooting pretty good. Actually spinning this fan up. I probably shouldn't let it do that, but. 
So in the world of peaceful, quiet, and cool gaming, this doesn't exist. But I have a theory, and the theory is, is that the only reason, even when I do put it on thermostat control, the only reason it actually overreacts right now is the room is hot. The idea is the fans aren't gonna have to work as hard if the air that's doing the cooling is cooler. It has now climbed to 77.7 degrees in the time I've been recording this. It's not doing anything, it's just idling. And we're almost at 78 degrees. Still 73 out there. Well, actually it should be 72. So the hope is by sucking all the hot air out and the cool air in from the rest of the house that I'll be able to maintain 73 degrees. I can actually set that to basically start at a given temperature and ramp up as it gets hotter. Since it's drawing air through the radiators, it will know the second the machine goes under load and be able to start pumping that heat out of the room. Hopefully. Now, I know the student among you are going to sit there and go, but if you pull a vacuum on the rest of the house, anywhere there's air leakage, air is going to be getting in. True. Now, with the exception of a majority of the year here in South Texas, it's usually cooler outside than it is in this office, but not by much. Even then, the problem again rises that it's 95 degree air hitting the thermostat around the thermostat. It's not spread out through the rest of the room. So what happens is after about three hours, this room will drop back down to 74, 75. The other rooms will be down in the 50s because the AC just, it doesn't know where the heat's coming from. It's not fancy. I think this will be the best bet. It'll also hopefully maintain stable clocks longer. I'm already starting to get a little hot in here. Hopefully this will fix it. Now the tea canister. We're going to get to the, to, to the mixed drink canister. Well, I'll explain that. But first things first, I wanna hook up all the doodads up to the computer point and let's just see how it works. Collar that actually connects it to the thing with a little bit of aluminum tape, just to be sure that it stays sealed up. And then we have our baffled, as well as we actually have the thing in the wall. So now we can go ahead and hook this up and start running the rest of our tubing. All right, there we go, right? It's uh, reading 77 degrees in here. This actually needs to be calibrated because it says now, actually matter of fact, take a look down there. We're back at 78.8 degrees. Uh, and all I'm doing is recording. I'm not even gaming. Like, it's starting to get hot in here. So I'm gonna let that run pretty much the rest of this time in hopes that maybe it'll do some good. It does move quite a bit of air though. Now, of course, the hose clamp and zip tie, that wasn't my final idea. No, 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 no. There's, there's more to be had here. Definitely more to be had. I'm thinking that should get mounted right there for one. But the tea container, see where I'm going with this tea container? The reason I have this hood set up here is so that I can have a hood on it and still open it to get in and work on the computer. On top of that, I wanted something cheap and modular so that as I, you know, change this 120 out for a 240 or maybe go custom loop on everything, I can adjust it. So to make this cheap, we're gonna make a hood that directs all the airflow through the radiators, utilizing a T-jug, some cardboard boxes, hot glue, make the hood and then seal it with flex seal to rubberize it and make sure it's coherent as one item. That's the plan at least. Then all the air will be drawn through, the thermostat will be mounted to monitor the exhaust air from the radiators. As the system loads up, it will ramp up and pull more air through. Right now, it's at half throttle. And I would say that is the equivalent volume of these fans being at full tilt during like Call of the Wild recordings with the exception of its much lower frequency, which may make it harder for noise cancellation to do its job, but it'll definitely be more pleasant because I'd rather listen to this than the screeching of those things. These fans are gonna stay on, the ones that are on here. They're gonna be just in case situation, but hopefully they won't actually need to be ramped up. But now to get to the hood. The hood is the hard part. The hood is the fun part. Not only to get to the hood, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and program this to monitor the temperature in here and get the air moving a little bit faster. All right, it can still get some volume to it. I don't think it'll be that bad once it's fed through the radiators. Because if it gets rid of that little bit extra whine and that whooshing sound, I don't think it'll be that bad. All righty, well, I think I have all my supplies together. I got me a little cutting mat, a framing square, some X-Acto blades, got the flex seal, 
I got super glue, I got uh, hot glue, got my mixed drink canister. So the idea is gonna be to build something that will just go up and over and kind of seal to the back of the radiators and allow this to hook up with a little hole for the sensor. I actually have this thing hooked up right now and it is pulling air right now and actually doing a wonderful job helping keep the room cool. Uh, it's having a little bit of a hard time because of course there's a lot of hot air being produced right here. There it goes, it's actually revving up. So right now it's reading 70, it was reading 76 degrees, I have it set to 75. So it's gonna ramp up until it gets back down and then it'll, uh, it'll turn the fan down. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this piece of cardboard and basically lay it over the radiators and trace them out. I guess I need to do that fairly quickly because both systems are running and I don't want to block the airflow too long. All right, so what we've started with here is basically I have this uh, shroud here that's from an old broken fan and the ability, the hope here that should line up right like that. So I initially marked here and here, these were the top of the radiators. Now both radiators have a half inch reservoir. So that's this distance here, that's accounting for the reservoir. And then this would be the first fan placement. So I'm gonna use the old fan shroud here as my template to oops, basically mark out where airflow needs to happen. All right, now they're not intended to be perfect. The concept here is that this area needs to be filled in because I basically, I want all the air drawn through these three holes. That's, that's basically it. It doesn't need to be perfect, but as long as these three holes are what's open and I can seal off everything else, we will be golden. Now the last thing I need to do is quick measurement here. All right, so it actually works out to where the two bars that go in and support the CPU and GPU radiators are right on the edge. So I should be able to just trim this thing out pretty much its entire length, just like this. All right, now for the fun part, need three holes. Be especially careful as I get over here to this edge because I don't want to make it too thin. I'm actually going to leave it a little thicker. Again, when I seal everything with the flex seal, I suspect that that's actually going to add a lot of rigidity. All right, now right off the bat, something I notice is there is gonna be some thinness here and along the edges. So I think what I wanna do is I wanna start by basically building off of this piece. So this will be the first part. So these are the rails that are actually used up there and they are 2020 extruded T-slot. Uh, called such because they're T-slot. slot Anyways, they all have these holes in here. And so I got a hole on either side of the radiator. So the idea is, is that this entire assembly is gonna go, this entire assembly is gonna go over and then just bolt in there. That's the hope. So this is strong enough. I'm gonna be able to like big enough. I can get my arm through. So I'm happy with that, but I do need some structural rigidity to this. I need me another strip of cardboard. I have a couple right here that will do just fine for the ends. I do need to figure out what my overall length is gonna be. Okay, it's actually kind of odd how that worked out. It's, it's a little on the long side, but I think that'll be perfect. So we're just gonna leave that be. Right there, I just picked it up and it went, ooh. Sun realization of another benefit of having that fan right there. Ventilation. I'm not getting high on super glue. Now the super glue, this isn't good super glue. This is actually like Loctite for other reasons. So this isn't really good for cardboard. The super glue is just to hold it all together while I get everything set up because I can still crack the glue and separate everything without messing up any of my pieces. So I've done something entirely stupid. The lines, the radiators go on this side. If I'm kind of careful, I think I can save this. 
So, unfortunately, what that means is I have to wait a minute and let all this completely dry so I don't glue it to my work area when I flip it over. But uh, yeah, it, it was supposed to go the other way because the if I try to do it that way, all these would have been butting up against the radiator, not the poles I put there for that reason. All right, so got everything flipped around the right way now, and I went ahead and made a pass with the hot glue and added some extra, extra, extra structure here in the middle. And uh, you'll see why in just a second. So the concept here is quite simple. Basically, this one is just going to sit right on top of all these radiators here. And then the outer housing is going to come down and this will actually go into it. We're going to, I'm going to leave it two pieces so I can pull it back apart and be able to seal everything with the flex seal when I'm done. But it is quite strong. I just didn't want it to be sitting here and the first time I fire up, have it try and crush in. I think these holes are big enough, but I could be wrong. All right, so now I need to make the sides that are gonna go on either side and then the hose. And I'm thinking we're gonna end up with something along the lines like this with just like a pyramid over top because, oops. Now that I've seen how flexible, now that I've seen how flexible this hose is, I thought I heard something fall. Oh yes, that in there. Now that I've seen how flexible this hose is, I'm not as worried about uh, what a, my initial concern was when I would open it, that the hose would go around the back and be pushing on all the plugs. Not as worried about that. All right, now for the sides. So there is the outlet, that's where the hose will connect. And uh, the reason I ended up doing this in two parts like this is that hot glue gun is gonna be kind of hard to get to once everything's assembled. So I figured by doing the outer part in two parts, it'll be easy that, and I'm having second thoughts about whether or not I'm gonna leave the first part we built separate or if I'm just gonna go ahead and attach that, which actually goes about there. Uh, I, I, I know I don't have a wide angle lens, so we're running out of room here, but uh, we're getting there. I'm just gonna assemble the rest of this outer piece, make the last piece, and we should be ready for the final level of sealant, hopefully. making some progress and here we go we have the 
outer shell to sit on top with the hose connection. I don't know why I keep leaving the plastic lid on. And then the inner shell here, that lines up with all the, uh, but basically that slides in there and takes it to the right thing. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry for a bit and get good and, um, well, dry really. And I think I've decided that I am gonna go ahead and make this all one piece. I was gonna leave this separate, but then originally I was also gonna make this an angled piece back here and taper this and do all kinds of weird stuff. And I realized I was, I can't find my chalk line that I was gonna use to do that with. So we're just gonna go ahead and seal it together. And then it's time for its uh, flex seal treatment and be done. And all in all, I don't think it looks uh, half bad. This hole will actually be covered up by the insert. So I don't know why it's there. I guess some extra attachment point. What's funny is, all this cardboard here is actually the Amazon box that the blower motor came in. And then this is actually part of the uh, AC Infinity box. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna stick the two together and then it's uh, I'm gonna take it out to the garage and do a treatment, so on and so forth. Alrighty, it's now been, it's about 24 hours later and here we go. So doesn't look too shabby. I went ahead and did uh, three coats, two full coats, and one uh, kind of touch-up coat, all black fix-a-flat. If I wanted to, I still have a couple cans of clear so I could seal it up a bit better. But again, for the purpose of what I'm trying to do here, which is just make something that's cheap and I could, uh, I'm not gonna be butthurt about having to throw it out, scrap it, and rebuild it. Uh, we got it, we got the three fan holes, everything lines up with the radiators. I made sure to go a little heavy on my layering around the tabs where, cause basically it's gonna sit on the radiator, hence the extra, uh, the extra, the extra stru uh, structure we put inside, spit the words out, and then these two tabs will basically just hold it like that. So the only thing left to do now to actually get this thing installed is I need to put a hole somewhere around this tube here to slip the temp sensor in. Then I need to align everything up on the computer itself and figure out where my two holes are gonna go here. And it's a matter of bolting it together and testing it. Now that being said, I've also been playing with the blower motor overnight. And as you can see, I actually have it up in the corner and it's just a thumbtack holding the clamp to the wall and then I stuck the tube and the probe up in there. So we're still sitting at the 77 degrees. Um, I only have it running at half RPM right now. I believe the reason it's struggling is A, I don't have the hose all the way to the top where the hot air would be just naturally collecting. I have a fan going so all the air is gonna circulate. It actually feels wonderful in here. This is one of the few times where I've been able to shut the door while working on something while the computer's going. I even have Premiere going right now. I even have Premiere going right now, actually working on the footage from yesterday. And it's not actually getting warm or annoying. Uh, one of the things though is right now it's running in auto mode and the auto mode with this system is a little bit different. So they, they upgraded the way their thermostats work from the last time I used an AC Infinity, which was their T6 plate or something. It was two 120 mils, basically had a USB controller. And uh, the thing I noticed about it was on the old system, you would have your set temperature. So right now I have it set to a high temp and then you go to on mode to set your max. So I have max RPM at half throttle and then then I have it set with a high temp of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically if it goes over 72, it starts ramping the fan up. On the older T6 plate thermostat I used, the further it got over your target number, the more it ramped up. With this one though, basically the second it goes over the target number, it starts ramping up until the temperature comes down. So. Like right now where it's reading 77, 78 degrees, I don't understand because it's not 78 degrees in here. It is very nice, but it might actually be picking up all the heat generated by the computer. And what I'm feeling is the cool air being sucked into the room, quite possible. So it will just ramp up. So if it goes 73 over 72 and there's enough heat being put in, it just can't get that last degree, it'll go full blast. And it's a little frustrating. I was hoping for a bit more of a ramp or maybe an adjustable ramp, but uh, you, know, you get what you get. Again, this is intended for grow rooms, which people are probably not trying to sit in and record unless they're making a Willie Nelson album. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it works for what I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the last couple modifications to get the hood actually mounted. And then it'll finally be time for a final test and hope that all this crap was worth it. All 
All right, so the blower motor is running at full blast. This is worst case scenario. We're recording in 4K. Uh, CPU coolant temperature is actually down from where it was last time. GPU temperature 51C. I'll have to look back to do a comparison, but that doesn't look half bad. And the room temperature is 77. So now I'm gonna let this run for two hours and see if when I come back, if the room heated up at all, or if it was able to exhaust all that heat. Uh, again, this is worst case in the future, I will sit there and fiddle with it and tune it down to where I don't end up with the thing having to run full blast all the time. Well, it's working. The room hasn't gotten any hotter. It's actually nice to be in here. The hallway hasn't gotten any hotter. The GPU hasn't gotten any hotter. We're still at full frequency. The CPU coolant temp is actually really low. Seems to be working. So I'm gonna try and do a little bit of tuning. And by that, I mean, I'm going to let it ramp all the way down and see what idle temps are and basically set it to set the fan now to back to automatic at idle. Take two. I've already recorded my outro, but I forgot to hit record. Any who's. We ran this thing full tilt, both the gaming side and the recording side with the NOR ray tracing benchmark and recording the whole thing in 4K for about three hours total. About an hour in, I pinned the baffled open with a clip just to make sure that to kind of reduce the resistance. And in the end, it worked. It's still 77 degrees in here. The exhaust temp was being managed to hit 85, never went past 85. GPU temperature on the 2080 Ti hit, I think it was 51, 52, never climbed past that. Still comfortable in here. It does its job. Now what I'm going to do, uh, but this will be, I'll do this on my own time. I'm going to ramp everything back up and find out exactly what RPM is needed to maintain that 85 degrees. So I'm just gonna keep turning it down until I see it climb to 86. That'll be my peak for auto. Idle seems to be about 77, so I'm gonna let it ramp from 77 to 85, and I would just won't let it go full blast. Like right now, it's actually maintaining 79, uh, so only two degrees over the target of 77, but it's only at level four out of 10. So right now, it's quieter than, as quiet as the fans are here normally idling, but it works. I'll put a link to in the description for the AC Infinity fan. This was cardboard and flex seal. It was that simple. And uh, the great thing is it's all modular, so I can sit there and as I do upgrades, I can change it out. I can just make another one of these. It wasn't expensive. It's still all on the hood system. When I want to say upgrade the GPU to have a 240 mil radiator, I just need to cut another hole out over here and a majority of my heat is being pulled out of the room. All right, so that's gonna do it for this one. There's buttons if you liked it, buttons if you didn't. And as always, buttons to push, until next time.